Hello and welcome to Hales Own College's third podcast, which is specifically for students who are finishing their courses with us this year. I'm Jo Williams, I'm Deputy Principal at the College, and I'll try and take you through some of the questions you've asked today, and also just give you an update of where we are. I'm here with Julia Edmonds, who's our Head of Partnerships, and she'll be putting your questions to me, and I'll do my very best to answer them as well as I can. I suppose the first thing to say is what a strange time and this wasn't quite how we planned it when you started your course with us. Um, it's a shame that you won't be there with all the people you've done your course with and your teachers to say goodbye and we're all really sorry about that and obviously all feel that pain a bit. Um, in normal circumstances you'd be finishing off coursework, our A-level students would have started exams um, and, and obviously it doesn't feel right, does it, somehow not to be there and not finishing off what you worked really hard for for two years. And I would encourage you to keep in touch with people, your personal coaches. And if you've got any additional questions that, are covered by the, that aren't covered by the podcast, you can submit a question on the website. We've now got a live chat. Um, you can email the hub at halesowen.ac.uk admissions at halesowen.ac.uk and info at halesowen.ac.uk or if you prefer Facebook Messenger again you can contact us in that way. So what I'm going to try and do today is just talk to you a little bit about what the rest of the academic year looks like and I'm sure you've got lots of questions about that. Give you an update on where, the, where, where we're at with the qualifications and then look a little bit at student finance, maybe gearing up for university for those of you that are doing that and give you some ideas about what if it isn't university, what you could do next year. In terms of this academic year, um, you will have regular contact with personal coaches and teachers and that won't just stop. But obviously after Whitson, which is next week, it seems a bit silly to say half term now, uh, the expectation would be that you'd be finishing your courses and actually moving on to the next step and probably some of you were planning long holidays. We still want to keep engaged with you and make sure A that you're okay, B that you know where you're going next year. So we're not just running away um, because you finished your course. And again the other thing I'd say to you is to keep in touch with people. It must be fairly strange even with the, the slight um, moving down of lockdown it's still really weird that you're not going out that you're not going to part-time jobs probably and coming to college so do keep in touch with personal coaches do do keep in touch with your friends on the course and just to keep yourself with a sense of reality I suppose I think that's what we're all doing and again if you are struggling with lockdown we have still got our safeguarding team our designated safeguarding leads advisors college counsellors and again all their email contacts are on the web page so please don't forget they're there and we are still there for you even though we're not actually at college fully. In terms of where we are with the qualifications if you were on a level three or a BTEC, OCR, NCFE or cash qualification and I think that's covered the major ones We've got an update for the majority of those courses now and we will be putting in calculated grades for you. So what we've done is look at the grades you got in the first year, the grades that you got this year up to the 20th of March and predicted an overall grade. If your course is slightly different because it has a practical aspect to it, if you're going to be expected to do anything else, then your personal coach will have been in touch with you or will be this week. So you'll have known for a little while now you haven't got to complete any more work although some people have chosen to complete that just so that they've completed the course and that's great and, and in actual fact I think if you're planning to continue to study that will be really helpful. Um, so you will have been working on other activities linked to either future employment or further study and please keep doing that because I think we're all probably fairly desperate for things to do um, on some of these long lockdown days. If you're an A-level student, a GCSE student or a functional skills student, then again, we will predict your grade. So you'll have done mock exams, classroom assessments and teachers will predict the grade based on what you've done to the 20th of March. So again, you won't have been expected to continue doing lots of essays and formal assessments, but hopefully you have continued working through those subjects because whatever they are, it will be useful for your future. You'll always need English and math skills. And if it's A-level subjects, it may be that you're intending to continue with some of those at university. But again, you will get a calculated grade based on your performance throughout the year and a half that you were at college. If you're a level one or level two student on a range of programmes from BTEC, OCR, ABC, CASH, 
city and guilds. Again, most of you will receive a calculated grade. And again, if they are practical subjects and you do need to do something, teachers will be in touch with you about that. So what we're suggesting that you do is carry on with some work because we anticipate most of you will be back next year doing the next level of the programme. So it's really important that you keep up to speed. We'll still catch you up in September, but the more you can do, the better. And again, unless it's really sunny like today, you're probably quite pleased to have something to do. If you're an HNC or HND student, the HN delivery online is ongoing and we're continued, continuing to assess where we can. And in some situations, we can certificate through remote sampling. So some of our external examiners are still in contact and you'll know if you're one of those students. If anything was unsuitable for online delivery, then we are getting ways to either adjust assessments, select alternative units. And again, we will be able to calculate grades in the rare case where we're not able to adjust the assessment. So people should have been in touch with you about that. If you do have any further questions, contact the course leader in the first instance. Um, or use one of the email addresses that I gave you at the start. City and Guilds courses generally, again, are ongoing, as with other courses. If there is a practical element, you will be advised if you need to do any more. Access students' calculated grades are due to go off today, um, so access students will be aware there's been quite a lot of activity. And again, work completed before the 20th of March has been used to predict your grade but some people may have worked on other things and none of that will go to waste because clearly you're looking at a career or an HE course in September. And again, you will get that grade through based on what you've done to date. So other things you might be thinking about is if you're going to university next year or going on to higher education generally, student finance. So if you haven't already done so, you need to complete a student finance application form. And this will ensure that finances are in place for when you start your higher education course. And those need to be submitted by the 12th of June. So you've still got plenty of time to do it. You need to check the student finance website if you've got any problems. And they've got a really useful FAQ section, which will hopefully explain anything you need to. There is a contact for student finance, which is phoning 0300 100 06 07. And also the College Careers page on Moodle has got loads of resources for you and information about student finance. If you haven't replied to offers on UCAS for 2020 entry, then obviously you should do so. And when replying to your offers, you should also do so via UCAS track. So similar to student finance, UCAS have got loads of information on their website, FAQs, and you know where our career staff are if you need any further information. If you've chosen not to apply for university this year, but are thinking you might do that for 2021, uh, UCAS is, will be open soon to start for 2021 entry, um, which may seem a bit strange when we're sort of looking at when we can actually go out. But for those of you making a UCAS application, you need to have that complete by the 13th of November, 2020. And access students, the deadline will be Friday the 20th of November. Again, seems a long way ahead, but just for information. If you're applying to Oxford or Cambridge for medicine, dentistry or veterinary medicine, then you need to have completed UCAS with our careers department by the 16th of September 2020 at the very latest. We've got a careers Moodle page which has got masses of information for you about all this. So your personal coaches will also be able to take you through some of that. But now's the time to do your research. There's loads of good really really good virtual open days online at the moment go and have a look at some of those look at what the universities are put, putting out at the moment and start to have a think about what you might do you could also start to draft a personal statement whilst at home um, probably one of the most difficult things I ever did was write a personal statement who knew that writing about yourself would be so difficult but trust me it actually is so to start that and chatting to people at home or sending things back and forth to your personal coach would be a really good use of your time at the moment. You can contact the careers department emailing careers at halesowing.ac.uk and it's your personal coach who'll write your reference for you alongside the subject staff all input and they'll be reflecting on your talents, achievements and things that you've done so again keeping in touch with them at this time showing them the work that you're completing and the kind of things you're doing will be really useful to them to input into that reference. We also run our education at Hales Owen College and it may be that this would be the ideal choice for you now. So by 
visiting the website, hovering over study, select higher education, and you'll see we've got a wide range of courses. I'll list as many as I can remember now, which is animal management, applied science, business, um, learning support, early years, health and social care, foundation degrees in conjunction with the University of Worcester. We've got construction, therapeutic counselling, sport and exercise science, education and training and engineering. And again, if you've got questions about these courses, we can put you in touch with course leaders, tutors via our admissions de department. We've got live chat on the website now, which I'm told is working really well. So again, if you'd like to use that, we can get a subject specialist to you fairly quickly. Alternatively, you can contact our head of partnerships, Julia Edmonds, on juliaedmonds at halesowen.ac.uk. You may also be thinking about apprenticeships, and some of you might have been thinking about apprenticeships for quite a while. And there's a lot in the media at the moment about apprenticeships being quite difficult to obtain because of the current economic situation. And that may well be the case, but we have got vacancies at the moment for apprenticeships, and they are still coming in. So please don't think that there's no chance of that. And again, start making applications now and researching opportunities. Vacancies are advertised on the government website, which is www.gov.uk forward slash apprenticeships. You can register, complete an application form on this website. Again, the Careers Moodle page has got lots of information which can help you with an apprenticeship application. And the apprenticeship handbook will also support you in completing the application. We have got an apprenticeship team at the college and again by going onto the live chat or sending into info we'll be able to put you in touch with the necessary person. So I'll now hand over to Julia to put your questions to me. Thank you Joe. So the first set of questions we received were around obtaining results. Uh, the first one is is there going to be a results day for BTEC level three? How and when will students find out their overall grade? So for level three, the date is the 13th of August. So they've kept the dates for results the same as they were going to be. In terms of how you'll get the results, we hope that some people like to pick them up and that you will be able to do that. But clearly we'll need to do that um, in conjunction with any guidance we get from the government to make sure that it is safe to do so. But everybody will definitely be posted results anyway. Okay. When will we get our results from our predicted grade for GCSE maths? So level two and GCSE results are on the 20th of August. And so you'll get your result on that day, either by post or if it's possible to be able to come in to collect them, then you'll be able to do that. When will I get my maths foundation exam result? That will be the same date, the 20th. How will the GCSE resits be assessed? I'm still doing work to achieve them. We will send a predicted grade, which is based on any mock exam results and any classroom based assessments that you're doing. If you've been doing assessments since the 20th of March, then obviously staff will have been looking at those. And I think that's really important in terms of your maths development and what you would have done. But the predicted grade is based on the work and the mock exams done up to the 20th of March. Okay. Will students need to visit campus to get results on results day or will they be posted or emailed? That is the, the real question at the moment. We are starting now to work on the campus to make it safe for students to come back and hopefully to, to get used to the new normal. Um, we'll need to advise you about what we're actually going to do for those results days because they tend to be associated with crowds of students, lots of hugging and lots of celebration and clearly the new normal may not allow that in the same way but we will make sure we keep in constant touch with you and let you know exactly how you can get your results on that day. Will the college's exams departments send evidence to the exam boards? When we need to send evidence, then we will send evidence. At the moment, we've been asked for predicted grades, and clearly we've kept evidence of all the grades for you, coursework where we've got it. And so if we are required to send evidence, we will do that. Okay. I'm studying the Level 3 Cambridge Tech ICT alongside my other two A-levels. I'd already sat all three of the exams and been told the result. I handed in my coursework prior to Ofqual stating that unfinished coursework did not need completing. Will this subject still be based on actual grades and coursework or will it be based on predictions and past data as normal A-levels would? If you've done the work, then we will base it on the work that you've done up to the 20th of March. Um, and in that case, obviously, it's a really secure grade that we're giving. 
so it will be based and all that work that you've done will be taken into account and any exam results clearly will inform the grade. Okay. We had two questions around campus life. The first one is, will we be able to visit campus before end of summer term? We hope that people will be able to visit the campus. Clearly that will need to be in a controlled way. Um, if you need to pick things up, then we will provide opportunities to do that. If it's a general visit, again, at the moment, there aren't many staff on campus, but subject to what the reason for the visit is, and if it's necessary, then yes, you will. What will happen to our belongings in the lockers on campus? So we will need to give you access to get any of your personal belongings back. And again, you can expect a message from your personal coach after the Whitson holiday, such as it is next week. Okay. Um, we had four questions around progression. The first one is, I'm a level two student wanting to go on to study a level three. How do I do this? So I'm hoping that you will have had a text about progression from your personal coach or an email and you will have discussed what course you want to go on to next year. And you should have a letter coming through this week confirming that we'll be doing all those progressions online week commencing the 1st of June. If you haven't received anything, then my suggestion is first of all, get in touch with your personal coach. But again, you can try admissions or any of the helplines that we've given you. And we will make sure that we sort out a progression for you from level two to three. Are students able to study another level in September? Yes, definitely. And that's really what we're planning to start again to get back to where we should be. So as long as you'd completed the work up to the 20th of March, you've kept engaged with your personal coach in whatever way you've been able to do that, then yes, there will be a progression for you in September. Okay. If students don't finish their year, what happens? It depends why they haven't finished their year, I guess. So if you haven't finished your year because of coronavirus, then clearly we will sort the progression and we will make sure that we make good whatever you've missed, which is no fault of your own. If you didn't finish the year because you you'd got an illness or you were having some problems, then talk to us and we will be able to sort out what you can do next. Um, if you did just for whatever reason not finish the year and maybe haven't been in touch for a while, again, that's not a problem necessarily contact somebody, talk to admissions, and we'll advise you either if there's another course here or what you should be doing now to kind of get your career and your future back online. So whatever it is, please do get in touch and we'll be able to help you. I am on a level two work-based course. As I'm unable to attend placement, how can I progress on to an apprenticeship? So dependent on what your level two course is, that shouldn't be a problem. Where people haven't been able to do placement, there's either been an alternative assessment given or some delay on the qualification. And we will make sure you can access an apprenticeship as and when. But it may well be you'll receive a grade anyway and there's no problem. My suggestion, because I don't know what course it is you're referring to, is that again, you get in, with pers get in touch with a personal coach or somebody from admissions or careers and we'll be able to advise you exactly what you need to do. Um, a number of questions around support. Uh, will the college provide support for students who didn't achieve the grades to go to university? Yes, definitely. Uh, so again, as soon as you know your results, whether it's actually physically on campus or via phone lines, we will be in touch. We can sort out some kind of negotiation with various universities because clearly they'll be mindful as well that you weren't able to sit the exams that you wanted to. We've got people who know you're here, who can advise you if you really can't get to university. So I, I'm not gonna say don't worry, because obviously I think there's an element of disappointment. And if I was waiting for results, I'd probably worry just because it's the unknown. But actually, whatever the case is, we'll have support here to help you. Will the college provide support for students wishing to retake their exams in November? Yes, we will. Um, again, we're unclear as to what those resits will look like yet. But certainly if there are people that need to resit things, whatever you need to do, we will help as much as we possibly can. How can I officially commend our tutors for their excellent teaching? That's a really nice question. Um, hopefully emails have gone out this morning to all students to ask you to nominate staff and with a reason as to, to why. First, something that they've done really well. We are still intending to have virtual student and staff awards because what's come out of this really clearly is that students have gone above and beyond and really worked well from home, kept in touch, helped each other, which I think says a lot about our student body, but equally that staff have done that and that staff have kept in touch 
and one of the nicest jobs I've had in the last few weeks is to read comments from the student survey where they've said about what staff have actually done to make sure they can keep learning or just keep sane because I think that's been a challenge for all of us at times during the last eight weeks so I really hope you will engage in those staff awards and let us know what the staff have done because it, it does mean a lot I think okay and the last question is as students are working from home now what is the college going to do differently in the future yeah again that's something we're talking about a lot at the moment it's unlikely that people will be on campus full-time in september with the social distancing arrangements so there will still be some remote learning and staff are currently learning from what people have done well and what students have told us we've done well and from what maybe hasn't but gone down so well so we will be doing some remote learning. We know that we'll need to talk to students more about that so you know how to get onto it and we make that really easy. And also look at what has gone really well. Interestingly, some students have really liked the online stuff as well. So clearly where that's gone very well, that might become a permanent part of what we do, not necessarily to replace face-to-face, -face, but on top of, or that, that there's an element of choice to engage in some parts of the programme. So we will still be doing remote learning. And again, as we send surveys out and I'm doing a student focus group on Friday that some students have been invited to you need to tell us what's worked really well because we can do more of that then because it's easy to design something and we'll design it with really good intentions but if it doesn't work for you we can do something different and I think to learn from the people who are actually experiencing that will be really good thank you Jim it probably just remains to say um, please don't sit at home and worry please let us know if there's anything that you need to know about. And other than that, I hope the time you did have at Hales Owen College was a good time and we wish you every look for the future, whatever that may bring. Thank you.